Good afternoon, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Monday, October the 10th, 2016. Well, we kind of start over a little bit, so we're going to go back and begin with the sea surface temperature anomalies. It is only October the 10th. We still have a decent amount of hurricane season left in front of us. Most of you should know that it ends officially November the 30th, but this time in October, we see sort of this secondary peak and the next three weeks could still be fairly active in the Atlantic Basin with an emphasis really now no longer out here but in this area closer to land masses so let's set things up look at this the La Nina kind of coming on here not technically a La Nina yet but we definitely have a large area of abnormally cold sea surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific and you contrast that with the very warm water here in the Atlantic Basin a few pockets of blue showing up as you would expect because Matthew moved some of that heat out it, it, it exhausted it it pulled it out of the oceans doing its job unfortunately part of that job description is killing people and that's unfortunate and I don't make light of that at all uh, these hurricanes have a purpose if we didn't have hurricanes we would probably have something worse and it's just unfortunate that they cause the damage and the loss of life that they do uh, Matthew will certainly be retired from the list of names and in six years we'll have another male name to replace Matthew so you see where it took that heat out and this will show up even more off the southeast coast in the coming days but the Western Caribbean and the entire Gulf still running above the long-term average pretty much near average out here and then still some above average temperatures but nothing alarming and we will say goodbye to the Cape Verde season out here and any main development region development until next year. Uh, so the focus again will shift on this part of the Atlantic Basin with really the western part of that being the bullseye so to speak if we're going to have development. And one of the reasons why I think we could still have development, look at this, the upper ocean heat content is as high as it has been the entire season. I mean these white tops here these are not clouds this is the upper ocean heat content and that corresponds to the top of the scale if not off of it and that just means that the water is extremely warm and fairly deep into the ocean and even off the coast of the Carolinas still have some fairly high upper ocean heat content values uh, as compared to where it's going over the next few weeks but the uh, waters in the western Atlantic north of 30 degrees latitude here will start to cool pretty quickly over the coming weeks and again uh, really this area is the region that I will be watching the closest over the next two to three weeks for something to develop so what's going on out there right now well let me show you first of all where the remnants of Matthew are located today let me go to the Northwest Atlantic view and you'll see this let me let's see if we can do the old visible satellite as this loads up so Matthew moved off the North Carolina coast and merged with this frontal system and now there it is located up here over the Canadian Maritimes as a large extratropical ocean storm and the energy basically got absorbed into this frontal system and Nova Scotia Newfoundland getting hammered we have a report from one of the subscribers to our client services hurricane track insider site from Newfoundland telling us how bad it is up there very heavy rains uh, windy 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 he says it's just unbelievable maybe even some loss of life up there unfortunately and you can see very strong southerly wind flow blasting right into the Newfoundland southern facing coastline and so this is the leftover energy sometimes these systems get entrained with mid-latitude storm systems and they wrap up into these powerful North Atlantic storms so that's what we saw here with Matthew uh, this will pass though over the next several hours and then 12 hours it should be out of the picture completely meanwhile here's Nicole waiting for all of this nonsense around it to go away uh, the strong upper level winds there's definitely some dry air you can just tell by looking at the satellite shot and if that abates enough then Nicole could strengthen to a category two uh, and threaten Bermuda which is right there inside the circle maybe even passing directly over Bermuda we need to watch that closely over the coming days let me go back to the track map and I'll show you what the forecast is for Nicole 
So the 11 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center indicating that it does strengthen back into a hurricane, and then it looks like it passes very close to, if not over, Bermuda. And they're only indicating 90 miles per hour, but I think that it could be stronger. It's certainly not arguing with the Hurricane Center. They would, I think, agree with me, you know, certainly that intensity forecasting can be very tricky. And you know, it's a matter of how much moisture and shear uh, different elements could affect Nicole. So the more moisture and less dry air, and the less shear there is, then Nicole could strengthen. And you know what can happen even over the course of 12 hours. It can ramp up very quickly. So if you are in Bermuda, then you need to be thinking about this. A hurricane watch will almost certainly be issued soon. And uh, the concern that I have, let me zoom in here, is if Nicole passes, and I talked about this yesterday, just to the west of Bermuda by about 10 miles, all right, the eye, kind of like what happened out here over the coast of Florida with Matthew, but Florida was on the west side. In this case, Bermuda would be in that right front quadrant right there if Nicole goes by uh, on a straight line there to the north and west of Bermuda by 10 miles or so. <clears throat> so we need to you know, monitor this. Being in that right front quad of a potentially strengthening hurricane is definitely not good news. So I'll be watching that closely might consider going to Bermuda. I just have to juggle some things and figure out if it's feasible. I love the area. I have somebody that I could stay with, etc., and do some fantastic reporting, uh, sort of as a hurricane chaser. I hate to say that. I mean, nothing against that, but that's not usually what I do is just one particular thing. I like to set up cameras and the wind instruments, but I can't haul all that over there so that I, you know, I'd basically be just reporting uh, and I'd do a good job, you know, I'd do the best I can, but I wouldn't have all my stuff with me, which is, makes it harder. But at least I could focus on posting video and updates, etc. But we'll see. It's expensive to get out there, and I'd have to leave tomorrow, so, um, or, or Wednesday it looks like. So anyway, we'll discuss that later. i got to talk with some uh, different stakeholders and my enterprise to see if we can pull it off. So why do I think also that the uh, Atlantic Basin isn't done yet? Well, the Euro, uh, ECMWF here, MJO forecast, indicating maybe some semblance of a phase eight and one progression, uh, but then it kind of just hangs out in the null area here, whereas the GFS and its ensemble members showing a fairly robust MJO pulse over the next two weeks. So I guess if you averaged these, and I don't know that you necessarily can, but let's assume that you can, uh, then maybe there's a weak MJO intrusion, so to speak, into phases 8 and 1, and that would favor Western Hemisphere development. And usually that means the at this time of year, as I pointed out, the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico regions. So the models have been sort of off and on, uh, pop up, pop down with development. I think we need another five days, and then we might see something come up towards the 20th, of the month so just keep an eye out for that I certainly will and uh, we'll see what happens maybe have one more issue to deal with which would be OTTO auto Matthew Nicole auto we're up to the O storm believe it or not meanwhile in North Carolina South Carolina any purple dot indicates a flood gauge that's in major flood stage as an example you mouse over this one Crabtree Swamp at Conway, South Carolina. Well, there's no data there, so that was a great example. Black River at Kings Tree, major flood stage now, well below the record, which is good. Uh, as an example up here, Little Petey River near Gallivance Ferry, also just slightly below the record, as you can see. Uh, but if we move into North Carolina, some of these areas, uh, Lumber River near Lumberton, this is where Jim Cantori and the Weather Channel were today. And then moving around towards the Cape Fear River at the William O. Husk Lock in North Carolina there. But moving on up into like Smithfield, Rocky Mount, etc., Tar River Basin, the Noose River, most of these below the record, which is good news because we were looking at the potential of some of these reaching Floyd levels from 1999. I think that's starting to come down. But let me find the one in here. Noose River at Smithfield did break the record. And I have a camera there. Uh, if you go to hurricanetrack.com, uh, it's right there on the homepage. I'll put a link to it 
and uh, over in the blog section underneath the picture. So be sure to check that out. Go to the website and right underneath the picture, I took a still shot, a screen capture, and underneath it is the link. And you can see this. Uh, there's a building there that's got some flooding. And it broke the record by just a little bit last night and actually went above the prediction. But the worry is uh, if we look at Goldsboro, this could approach the record and stay above flood stage for a while. But let me find Kinston in here, right there. Let's see, come on. So Kinston isn't quite, let me zoom in. Very fluid here, no pun intended. So Kinston, where are you? Tarboro, Greenville. You'd think I would know my areas better, right? Where is Kinston? For goodness sakes, it just dropped. There it is, where it says Kinston. This is an important one because it's forecast to be about a foot under the flood of record, which was Floyd. And this is also a pretty long duration event coming up. Uh, the worst of it really starting on Tuesday, uh, Thursday, I'm sorry, and then staying above and in that record territory, close to the record territory for some time. So this is going to be the focus of a lot of attention. And this is what I have to juggle because I would love to put a camera up there on Highway 70, one of our long duration cameras that should run for 66 hours, and um, see what happens. So, you know, do I put it up on Wednesday and then hope that it runs through Thursday into early Friday and then still try to go to Bermuda? That's <laughs> a lot to try to figure out. <sighs> I tell you, to be in two places at once would be, in, in, in fact, in another country. Bermuda, and then have a camera in Kinston would be pretty remarkable. I could, you know, have my cake and eat it too, so to speak. But I would like to monitor this because it's something that is approaching the catastrophic event of 1999. That's really important. So I got a lot to look over over the next 24 hours and make some decisions there. All right. So that's about it. Uh, at least the East Pacific, no real worries out there at all. And the Atlantic Basin, other than Nicole which again is going to be a big deal for Bermuda. We're going to have a little bit of a lull, but like I said, let's look around over the next 10 days. I think something will try to develop around the last third of October. And if it doesn't, fantastic. If it, if it does, we got to watch it because those water temperatures are still so very warm. All right, well, that is it for me for today. Have a great rest of your Columbus Day. I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Your encouragement, your comments, and your support, those of you that have purchased the app, et cetera, and even some folks that have made contributions to our PayPal, it has been really, really motivating to see sort of that crowd-funded and crowd-supported. I mean, that's very important. You know, the money is what makes the world go round, but your uh, extremely motivating comments and encouragement and your appreciation for what I and my team you don't see the guys behind the scene helping to keep me going. Um, one day I'll mention them, but it's not just me. Believe me. And, you know, you know extending out to my family, et cetera, et cetera, it is really, really motivating, and it does. When you get as exhausted as I get staying on top of this constantly, the feedback is very, very important, and I appreciate it, and I wanted to let you know that from the bottom of my heart. So, again, have a great rest of your Monday afternoon. Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll be back with you with another video tomorrow.